Was Christopher Columbus' discovery of America really a discovery? Spanish explorer Christopher Columbus will forever be remembered in American history. He was a 15th and 16th century explorer who traveled across the Atlantic Ocean from Spain. Columbus's journey in 1492, 1493, 1498, and 1502 opened the way for European countries to explore, exploit, and colonize America. This also resulted in the birth and discovery of the New World. Although Columbus sought a direct water route from Europe to Asia for trade purposes, he ended up discovering America instead. His journey to America created exposure for the people and changed their history forever. When it comes to the life of Christopher Columbus, there are several speculations and assumptions. Over time, he has been blamed and credited with opening America up for exploitation and colonization. Although some information about Christopher Columbus is quite debatable, today we will be sharing some of the known facts. First, we will start with a rundown of his early life. So, who is Christopher Columbus? Before we jump into the story, we like to say thank you and welcome once again to another exciting episode of People's Journals. Remember to like, share, and subscribe to the channel to stay informed. The Early Life of Christopher Columbus Christopher Columbus's specific month and day of birth aren't publicly known. However, most historians agree that the explorer was born between August and October 1451. It is believed that Columbus grew up in Genoa, a small Italian seaport village. This location can be traced to the northwest coast of present-day Italy. The famous explorer was the oldest of five children. His siblings consisted of three boys, Bartholomew, Giovanni, and Giacomo, and a sister named Biancinetta. His father, Domenico Colombo, was a middle-class wool merchant, while there's little to no information about his mother, Susanna. The young explorer attended Prince Henry's School of Navigation in Sagres, Portugal, for his education. This action influenced his career path in the long run, as his naval skills were sharpened. Every other form of education was self-taught. This includes the acts of cartographers, map makers, and maritime explorers. Growing up, Columbus learned trading from his father, whom he acted as an apprentice to. However, he was always fascinated by the sea. As a result, the explorer began a seafaring journey at the young age of 14. He started sailing on merchant vessels across the Mediterranean, Europe, and West Africa. Columbus's seaman career officially began in the Portuguese Merchant Marine. Here, he traded in the Portuguese fortress of São Jorge da Mina, currently known as Elmina, Ghana. In 1476, the explorer survived a shipwreck off Cape St. Vincent. This led to his settling in Lisbon with his brother Bartholomew. Subsequently, they both worked as chart makers. However, Columbus was more of an explorer and an entrepreneur. So he sailed to Iceland and Ireland in 1477. A year later, in 1478, Columbus worked as an agent for the Genoese firm of Centurioni, facilitating the purchase of sugar. Christopher Columbus later got married to Felipe Peristrello, a Moniz, in 1479. His wife, Felipe, was from a well-known Italian-Portuguese family. As a result, the Union gave Columbus connections in the Portuguese court and prestige. In 1480, the couple had their first and only child, a son named Diego. However, a few years later, Columbus's wife, Felipe, died from unknown causes. After the death of his wife, Columbus took in Beatriz Enriquez de Harana of Córdoba, a 20-year-old orphan, as his mistress. With her, he had his second son, Ferdinand, in 1488. Christopher Columbus's journey to discovering the New World Although Leif Erikson had visited North America earlier than Christopher Columbus, Christopher was termed the discoverer of the New World. Columbus had developed a plan to seek passage to the East Indies to find a lucrative spice trade. So, his journey to discover the New World began with a quest to Asia. 
Therefore, after the Granada War, he began lobbying for sponsorship for his journey west. Luckily, his voyage was sponsored by the Catholic monarch of Aragon, Castle, Ferdinand II, and Isabella I. Columbus was after fame and fortune, and so were Ferdinand and Isabella. This decision was also coupled with the intention to export Catholicism to other parts of the globe. The young explorer's contract with the Spanish ruler, in addition to sponsorship, offered him 10% of whatever riches he found. He was also rewarded with a noble title and the governorship of any land he conquered on his voyage. So, on August 3, 1492, Columbus left Castile with three ships, Niña, Pinta, and Santa Maria, and made a journey west. The trip was not an easy one, as the ship sailed for five weeks. Food and water were challenging for the sailors, with some men dying due to food poisoning. Finally, land was spotted on October 12th, the date recorded as Christopher Columbus discovering America. The explorer landed on an island in the Bahamas known as Guanahani, which he later renamed San Salvador. The natives he met were friendly, but they offered no gold or spice. So he went from island to island for months searching for riches, such as precious stones and other objects. Subsequently, Columbus visited Cuba and Hispaniola, where he established a colony in Haiti. Here, he left several dozen of his men and returned to Spain in 1493. However, he didn't return alone. He took with him some natives who were, of course, captured. Columbus kept details of his journey documented, including his first encounter with the local people. According to his diary, which was later gifted to Isabella I, the native people were naive and willing to trade everything they owned. He also pointed out in his diary that they were well built with good bodies, bearing neither arms nor means to create one, making them fine servants. After his first visit, Columbus returned to Castile in 1493. Soon, word of Columbus's voyage spread across Europe, making him more famous and increasing his connections. Christopher Columbus later made three more visits to the Americas. This voyage includes exploring the Lesser Antilles, which he visited in 1493. Returning to the Hispaniola settlement, he found the place destroyed and left his brothers behind to rebuild. Still, on his quest in search of gold and other precious stones, Columbus headed west with a large number of enslaved indigenous people. His other voyages included the northern coast of South America and Trinidad in 1498. Columbus went across the Atlantic before returning to the Hispaniola settlement. However, this time he met an uprising. The colonists, treated brutally and poorly by the Columbus brothers, had staged a bloody revolt. The situation was so bad that the Spanish authorities had to step in and take over by sending a new governor. Subsequently, Columbus was removed from the position of colonial governor. His strained relationship with the Crown of Castile and its colonial administrators in America didn't help either. In 1500, the explorer was arrested and removed from Hispaniola. He was also stripped of his noble titles. In 1502, Columbus persuaded the Spanish Crown to sponsor one last trip across the Atlantic. This time, the aging explorer, now 41 years of age, traveled to the east coast of Central America to Panama. Here, he was faced with hostile natives and storms. As a result, he had to abandon two of his four ships. During his return voyage, Columbus also suffered from an illness believed to be gout. This was later followed by influenza and other fevers in the coming years. The once vital explorer's health deteriorated with symptoms like bleeding from the eyes, which resulted in temporary blindness and prolonged gout symptoms. Unable to find the trade routes and precious stones he was searching for, Christopher Columbus returned to Spain. The attack on his health became more severe, leaving him bedridden for months at times. Eventually, 
Christopher Columbus died in 1506. So, what's the Christopher Columbus legacy about? Until today, many of the geographical names and features Christopher Columbus gave to the several Icelands he visited are still in use. For example, he called the indigenous people he met Indios, which means Indians. Columbus was confident that he had reached the Indies, which resulted in the Native Americans he saw being called Indians. To date, the term American Indian is still being used to describe the indigenous people of America. Christopher Columbus's expeditions resulted in the birth of colonization, exploitation, and exploration of the American regions he visited. This brought the people of America under the influence of Europe. It also resulted in the Columbian Exchange. This is a trade of ideas, commodities, diseases, and people between the two worlds. These events are often cited as the beginning of the New World or Nodern Era. Wheat was introduced to the Americans, and whole foods like corn, potatoes, and tomatoes were introduced to Europe. However, under his government as a colonial governor, Columbus committed more harm than good. He was accused of significant brutality by some of his contemporaries. He was also accused of the depopulation of Hispaniola's indigenous Tainos through slavery and mistreatment. The native Taino people were forced to search for gold and plantations. This population was eventually decimated after an encounter with the explorer. Within 60 years of his voyage into America, the Taino population, which was assumed to be over $250,000, was left with just a few on their island. The effect of Columbus's discovery is still felt today. Many Western hemispheres bear his name. Examples are the South American country of Columbia, the American city of Columbus, Ohio, and the U.S. capital, the District of Columbia. In today's world, Christopher Columbus's legacy is quite controversial. Although he was widely celebrated as a daring and path-breaking explorer, public perception changed in the 21st century. This change can be attributed to the more significant harm than good committed under his government and due to his discovery. As a result, Columbus is often remembered for unleashing changes that were devastating to the native population he came across while exploring. Was Christopher Columbus a hero? As historians poke into the legends and myths surrounding Christopher Columbus, certain factors indicate that maybe the explorer was the hero many assumed him to be. As the governor of Hispaniola, now the Dominican Republic, and Haiti, Columbus facilitated the murder and enslavement of several Taino people. Back in the day, human rights weren't a thing. However, in today's world, equality is used to judge these past events. The finding reveals that the explorer forced the Taino population he colonized to mine for gold. Brutal crackdowns of unrest also characterized his rule. According to a Dominican friar known as Bartolome de las Casas, Columbus and his men committed different acts of terror, from slaughter to sexual violence and torture. The explorer also forced the Islands indigenous people to convert to Christianity. Also introduced to the natives were diseases like smallpox, which cut them down in their numbers. In 1499, accusations of Columbus's tyranny and incompetence as a colonial governor reached Spain. As a result, the court of Spain appointed a royal commissioner to help Columbus govern. The commissioner, Francisco de Bobadilla, upon his arrival, was met with complaints about Columbus and his brothers. According to Bobadilla's report to Spain, Columbus once punished a man caught stealing corn by cutting off his ears and nose and then selling him as a slave. He further claimed that the explorer governed the people through torture and mutilation. He also gave an instance of Columbus commending his brother for defending the family by cutting the tongue of a woman who spoke ill of him and his brothers. The woman was also paraded through the streets naked, 
Also included in Bobadilla's document are the methods used by Columbus to stop native unrest and revolt. According to the report, he ordered a brutal suppression of the uprising, which resulted in the deaths of many natives. Columbus then paraded the dismembered bodies through the streets to discourage further rebellion. However, all these charges were vehemently denied by Columbus. Although he was later arrested in October 1500, Columbus was released after six weeks on the order of King Ferdinand. As a result, in recent times, concerns have been raised about replacing Columbus Day with Indigenous Peoples Day. This new change is meant to celebrate the indigenous people who experienced the negative consequences of Christopher Columbus's voyage. So, statues of the Spanish explorers have been subjected to protests and calls for removal, including the one in Manhattan. Subsequently, several cities and states have passed bills to abolish Columbus Day, replacing it with Indigenous Peoples Day. The Italian-American community majorly supports this motion. Another argument for abolishing Columbus Day is that, unlike popular opinion, the explorer didn't discover America. According to history, he wasn't the first explorer to come across America. So, today, Christopher Columbus's actions and legacy are still being debated. While some celebrate him as a hero, others regard his actions as unacceptable. Are there any positive effects of Columbus' voyage to America? Yes, there are. Christopher Columbus' voyage to America resulted in the birth of the Columbian Exchange. Although this trade had some opposing sides, there were also several positive sides. First, the discovery of the New World promoted agricultural diversity. The Colombian Exchange facilitated the spread of food crops across several parts of the world. This resulted in increased food production and better nutrition, reducing the risk of malnutrition. Also, the commencement of trade developed the economic systems of both worlds. The new and old worlds traded food, animals, gold, silver, and spices. However, Europe had more economic growth. Columbus's discovery promoted the exchange of technology and ideas. Metalworking and gunpowder were introduced into the new world. Lastly, cultural diversity was promoted as a result of Columbus's voyage. Both worlds were exposed to each culture and believe in creating tolerance for cultural differences in today's world. In conclusion, did Christopher Columbus discover America? Technically, Christopher Columbus didn't discover America. Yes, the Spanish explorer had sailed out to find a trading route to Asia. His ship, however, chartered him to America, which was already existing before his discovery. America had a life and rich history before European colonization, which was spearheaded by Columbus's discovery. Before Columbus' voyage, American land was owned and cultivated by the Native American people. As stated by the Bureau of Indian Affairs, the American Native people comprise 574 nationally recognized tribes. Christopher Columbus was the first European to land on the Bahamas Archipelago and Hispaniola, now known as Haiti and the Dominican Republic. He went as far as Central and South America, but never came close to the now known United States. If the term discover is used to characterize the Native Americans' first encounter with the European world, then the Vikings should be credited as the first Europeans to discover North America. Thank you for joining us on this captivating journey through the life and voyage of Christopher Columbus and how it resulted in the birth of the New World. Don't forget to show your support by liking this video, subscribing to our channel, and ringing that notification bell. Stay tuned for more engaging content from People's Journals, where history comes alive.